Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Schneider's Golf. Today I want to do something a little bit different. I want to talk about what I've been doing on my CNC mill. I have been doing a retrofit for about nine months. So all of the crazy cool putters and things that I made have either been on my Tormach or they were already made. So things that I made with like Zach, uh, things on Brian's channel, those were either already made or I made on the Tormach. I want to talk a little bit about what has gone into this mill retrofit. In 2016, I was looking on some local classified sites and I actually got this Cincinnati Arrow for free from a local company here. And I had hired a guy to do a retrofit for me. Paid him a bunch of money up front and kind of got screwed on the deal. The machine never worked, the tool changer never worked, the RPMs were off on the spindle. It would just glitch out and shut off and go into e-stop, just like a machining nightmare. And so I kind of said, I'm sick of dealing with all these issues. And I cut the controller out, which is right here. This is what this clown had installed in my mill, which is pretty much a Mach 3 board with a bunch of relay clusters. And you can see how well that worked out for me. So I cut it out of my cabinet and I got online and was looking for a control solution and stumbled upon Centroid. Hit up my local Centroid rep who's been awesome to work with, got my board and just started going to work. Um, I knew really nothing about wiring or anything and I have poured over this wiring schematic. There's like food on it, lines on it. Uh, but I've pretty well memorized every single part of this wiring schematic because to hire a machine tech is like two to four hundred bucks an hour. And i just not making that many putters right now. So I have to do a lot of this stuff on my own, which is cool because it's, it's a learning journey. And I really like the electronic side, the motion, the automation side of all this, CNC milling and stuff like that but it does take a lot of time to learn and so it's been nine months pretty much of learning how drives work and encoders and relays and contactors and just all the things that go into industrial automation which is a lot because i don't really learn things that fast my limited knowledge has been growing and you know struggling late nights early mornings trying to get this machine up and running and it's been a piece at a time uh the drive motors were the first thing the wiring like getting the e-stop to work and i can say that i have the drives working now and i have the spindle motor almost there i just need to get the encoder working correctly but let me show you kind of what i've done over these last nine months i think this mill's almost ready to work correctly and make some awesome putters check it out all right so we'll start in the cabinet this is the biggest nightmare part of the whole retrofit let me show you around. So what we have here, we have power coming in, goes through a couple transformers, uh, gets slimmed down to either 24 volts or 110. So we have a couple fuses here, we have some contactors here, we have these big contactors for the spindle and the coolant pump, and these are our drives. So these are delta drives. Uh, these have to be configured individually, one at a time and then they have to be calibrated. And then this big guy here is the spindle drive. And this is the oak board. This is where pretty much all of the control magic happens. This is telling the drives where to go. It's telling the umbrella to go in and out. And then a smaller version of the oak, which is kind of a branch off called the 1616 board, which is the limit switches, uh, the tool changer, and a couple other things that are in out type stuff. You will appreciate the fact that everything is labeled with a heat shrink label. So everything's labeled. I know where to find things, which is a huge plus. All right, let's get to the motion and the control console here. This right here is probably my favorite part so far. This is Centroid's wireless MPG. And all of the control here is wireless, which is super nice. So if I want to look at a part, I can get in here and I can actually be inside of the cabinet I don't have to be here, you know, spinning the dial, which is probably not that big of a deal, but for me, 
with the Tormach, I love getting my head in there and looking around, you know, as long as we're doing so safely, obviously. It just works super good. So check it out. We'll home the machine quick. Push start here. So Z is going to home here. You can see it moving up. It touches off the limit switches a couple times. I have X homing here now. And then Y goes and homes. And now we're ready to mess around with the MPG. So let me show you that. So we'll spin this. And you can see as we do so, X is moving over. So we'll switch to Y. As I spin this, you can see Y will back up. So Y is moving away. If we put the MPG onto Z, and then we'll go negative on Z, you can see that spindle will start to move down. Pretty fun to have an MPG that actually works. This took me kind of a long time to get, uh, but I'm pretty stoked about it. That's the control motion there. I'll take Z, I'm gonna run it back up here so I can show you the tool changer quick. So right now I'm dealing with the spindle. Something's up with the encoder and the feedback. I can get the spindle to run, but it runs up and then it faults out. I'm, I'm trying to figure that out, kind of doing that tonight. It's just that, then the tool changer, and you should be good to go. I'm, I'm hoping that I'm close. This is kind of what the spindle's doing. Let me show you really quick here. So you can hear it ramp up and then it faults out. Just trying to figure out why we're getting a spindle fault. Going back and forth, changing settings on the drive. It's kind of time consuming, but obviously learning as, as we go. And then the other thing would be this uh, tool carousel here. Let me show you this quick. So we got that to go, which is kind of fun. And then it'll go back home. And then the actual carousel moving. Let me show you that quick. And then we have the actual carousel moving, which is all, you know, got to be done through this motor and a proximity switch and a tool counter. So bottom line, there's a lot going on. It's very time consuming. A lot of it's over my head but I just chip away at it a little bit every day. Hopefully, within the next couple weeks, this machine will be back up and running and we can make some really cool putters on it. I actually just got news that there's a Mazak Horizontal available in a city that's close. I talked to the owner, told him I want it, and so I'm gonna try and get that Mazak Horizontal in here before the end of the winter and learn how to program on a Mazak Horizontal. It's a two pallet, HTC 400 that will be exciting to get here as well I'll do a video on that picking it up but that's kind of what's going on in the shop that's where a lot of my time's going in the evenings so the next steps would be to get the tool center wired up buy one of those for this and then also a probe to be able to probe off my work coordinates that's all gonna be really cool and fun when it happens um, it'll be a lot more cost-effective than buying like a Renishaw might not be as nice but definitely a lot of functionality, getting a lot of bang for buck by doing this myself. Kind of in a roundabout way, the reason why I'm showing you this and showing you my retrofit and the things that I'm doing is because I want to someday have a five axis mill in here. And five axis mill is a ton of money. Like to buy even the cheapest Haas with five axis on it, I think you're, you're right around $100,000. So that's a lot of money to lay out. If I can get a mill and program my own fifth axis on it, for 15, that's definitely doable for me. That's kind of my motivation to do this. Like this horizontal pallet machine that I've talked about, it will have two pallets. That's a fourth axis machine for extremely cheap. If it works, it's awesome. When it doesn't work, it sucks. I think my next retrofit I could do in a month or, or weeks and not nine months. Just the learning curve is so big on something like this. But I think if I were to do one again, I could do it way faster, way cheaper, way more cost effectively. That's that's really a big motivation for me to do this, to spend the time to learn how to do the control and so that I don't have to rely on somebody else to work on my machinery for me. It's annoying to go down and not be able to you know, work on your own machinery. So 
a big motivation for me. Hope you learned something new. Hope maybe some of this was interesting. It's not the typical on the course challenge or cool putter build, but it's definitely an integral part of who I am and what I enjoy doing. And hopefully you learned something new. So hope you're having a great day. Get out and play some golf and I will see you next time. Take care.